welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. <laughs> Working on her anime character -ness. If you've <laughs> ever felt helpless about the world and wanted to make a real difference, then do we have the Light and Love show for you. Today we'll talk about bringing light to the world, increasing love, and raising the planet to a higher frequency. That puzzle pop talk about skating to kayaking, hiring a new manager, existential kink, calling in guides, rebirth, rewiring to loving awareness, starting a new show, and what in the world, Ooh. hot tubs and slime right. have to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! I don't know if I want to know about the hot tub, but I think that's well, where I'm we've drawn. Got beautiful, we've got this beautiful hot tub out that I haven't used uh, since we've been here because it's been uh, ice all around it, and I couldn't actually safely get to it. Mm. And this week or last week, the ice collapsed literally in a 10-minute period. I looked at the ice, and then 10 minutes later, the ice was gone. It was wild. Wow. And we're this massive lake. This is the biggest lake in New Jersey. It's a huge lake. And it was all gone. It just had a complete collapse. And now it comes back a little each morning and then it goes away. But I got to kayak this past week. And then I get to dip my feet, then my knees, then a little bit more in the 32 degree water. And so I want to go running up to the hot tub. And so yesterday, two days ago, was the first time I could get to the hot tub. And I flipped back the lid and it was kind of slimy on the inside of the lid. But I'd been told by the cleaner not to worry about that. So I got in, hung out for a little bit. I'm like, this is pretty awesome. This is life is good down by the lake in the hot tub. So it's but heated it up right now. So it's heated. It's it was, slimy. It's heated. Yeah. It, and the water didn't feel slimy, although you, you couldn't see through it, but it was just, you know, normal bubbly uh, hot tub water. So I thought, but it didn't feel right. So I got out and uh, the next morning, uh, the hot tub uh, cleaning gentleman was here. He comes every few weeks and um, he condemned it. <laughs> And so it's it's been cleaned, it's been scrubbed. I, I got this this email from the owner saying, do not go in it. And then today I'm on the bicycle in my little trainer and I feel fine, but I started having this coughing fit afterwards. Oh, no. I don't feel sick or anything, but you'll probably hear a little bit of a cough. I haven't been anywhere. It's, it's not going to be anything in the COVID family. I'm like, did I just slime myself? What was I breathing in this hot tub? <laughs> It could be mold spores then. It could be mold, do you think? Uh, well, it was black mold, he said, in on the, uh, the the cover in there. So I was inhaling some sort of something. Well, oh, I the dangers of modern life. <laughs> I actually have something similar that they're doing um, work next door to us. And so um, my nutritionalist said, you've been exposed to environmental mold. And um, it made me so terribly sick, like sick and coughing and sleeping all the time, which is what Jessica had, right, with her yeah, mold. She and had blood. real mold toxicity, yeah. Mm. So stay tuned. I am I am challenging myself to become – I'm a pretty positive guy, but this has been a challenging year for us. So I'm challenging myself to become the most positive person on the planet. So all right, I've breathed in some good black stuff. It's all good. <laughs> 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 they and there's a car alarm fix? going on outside as I say that earlier this morning when I said do I need to know what the test was a uh, uh, like a bomb siren went off and down <laughs> and I'm like, what oh no <laughs> oh my gosh you're definitely being challenged okay so what's a new show I'm excited to hear that well we're, we're turning lemons into lemonade we started earlier uh, well we started the beginning of February um, airing shorter shows in addition to our long format shows. And um, for a little bit, it looked like our audience was going up, 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 up. But the long-term trend is it's actually been going down, 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 down. Mm. Uh, it affects YouTube algorithm says you've got a shorter video. And so people are watching it for less time. Well, yeah, it's a shorter video, but the, apparently the algorithm is just looking at not the percentage of watch time, but it's looking at the total watch time. Oh. And since they're not watched as long, YouTube is actually tamping down the, the pipeline, making it harder for people to find our videos, which is um, concerning, shall we say. But as the world's most positive guy, we are going to simply take the shorts, put them on their own new channel, get them the heck out of the long channel, and we'll do more long videos. Uh, so I see. so it's you a have learning. a long channel, short channel video. 
show. Yeah. Maybe. So we decided that five minutes before talking with you is okay. <laughs> we're going to start a short channel, and we will. So um, it is such a. If we look globally at all everything going on and all the wonkiness, if we look at our own lives, nobody's life to me appears as stable as it was a few years ago. There is so much influx of energy, and it's like, what are we going to do with it? And you keep on asking yourself, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And the best thing that we can do, and it, this has been admittedly hard for me, but I'm doing much better now, is let's let's pump up the love and light. Let's get the energy up there. And then hopefully the chips will fall where we would like them to or someplace even better. Yeah. But let's just pump up energy into the system. So all morning I'm going, wow, well, that doesn't look too good. All right. <laughs> I can do this. Totally giving myself those pep talks, talks right now. <laughs> I get it. You know, I, mean... crawled off, I crawled off the bicycle thing. I, what I didn't mention is I got this indoor bike trainer. I think I mentioned yeah. that to you a few weeks ago. First, the hill climber on it was dead on arrival. Um, the part that raises and lowers the front end to make it up and down hills was dead on arrival. Oh, I got that returned, got that exchanged for a new one last week. It died this morning. Oh, no, because I assume that there's like a huge assembly of this whole thing. And then if it doesn't work, you have to like disassemble and repackage, which is a yeah, nightmare. It's 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 interesting. And I got I got another geeky toy for it yesterday, which was to help you be able to steer while you're on it. And oh, cool. so I was, one was going to be I was going to have a steering device for flat day workouts and then the hill climbing device for hill climbing days because nobody makes something that does all of it yet. Right. Um, the steering device didn't work on arrival, haven't been able to figure it out, and the climby device uh, retired itself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> no, maybe you got to go back to like the traditional spin bikes where you can actually adjust it with just a small lever. Well, the back, the pedal part still works great, and um, I'm starting to get stronger. I am such a shadow of what I was even a few months ago, but I have gotten um, top 10 in a sprint, and I have gotten top 10 in a hill climb, nice. and... So I'm, I'm, although that was this morning and <laughs> then it had led to uh, me getting off of the bike and, and coughing for a while as if I was a chain smoker. <laughs> oh Love and light. Love and light. What, would, what were we saying last week? You know, chocolate smoothies. Oh, yeah. that's interesting because I have now a fruit smoothie here by me because um, to try to keep the cough down. Mm. You know, I had kind of, I mean, I did not have a similar week to you in the sense that it sounds like you had a pretty rough week. I had, I'm just feeling the energy, right? And so, um, absolutely. Uh, you know, last week I was just, I, I, I don't know. I can't, I'm actually now getting confused with the weeks. You know, I'm like, I don't even know what week is what and when, you know, because I, I think last time I told you how I was angry. And then um, I, I was able to um, go to a meditation class. And um, my teacher, John Bernie, had said, you know, the key thing is to be in alignment. You need mm -hmm. to constantly put yourself back into alignment. And I sat in meditation and I was aligning and it was so rough that I, I felt so toxic that I had to jump out of my meditation chair, go into my bathroom and dry pee. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I was like, Whoa! <laughs> It's like, oh, my God, I am, like, consuming so much toxicity that I a actually was trying to throw up because I had so much. I don't even know what. And then the rest of the day I passed out and, like, went to sleep. And then I thought, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then I read this book called Existential King. And um, it, the title is very provocative. But the idea is that even in these times of hardship, there is – something that we're getting out of it right there's some of course there's something there's a secondary gain and sometimes the secondary gain may not be all that flattering do you know what i mean but it's to be real with it so i was like well out of this whole scenario because it feels like i'm just feeling awful and feeling everything and um i recognize that i'm getting two things one is i'm getting compassion and what it feels like to be helpless hopeless and sad like if yeah. you experience it's one thing to like see it on the news and be like well that's so hard to hear um but it's another thing when you experience it kinesthetically and then you think okay why would some why would experiencing this be good 
And what I realized is that, you know, I never got to be helpless as a child and no one ever came to my rescue. And so part of it is kind of being in that space and knowing that as an adult, I can be rescuing myself and I don't need to, and I can be helpless and it's okay to be helpless and hopeless because I, it was never okay for me to be helpless or hopeless ever. So it's a lot, just allowing myself to be there. So that was kind of a big aha, like, okay, you're getting something out of this because otherwise it has this kind of vigilante, like I'm out here doing this for everyone's behalf. I'm getting, you know, the heck beaten out of and I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Just kind of where I was at this weekend. And that book um, helped me, um, I think, move to, uh, okay, you are getting something out of this, even if it's... Um, the book was talking about how it's about returning to wholeness. Mm -hmm. So basically when you can embrace all parts of yourself, the helpless, the hopeless, the angry, the um, you're becoming more non-dual and you're embracing all of yourself, therefore embracing people and what they're going through and being an equanimity in it uh, with it all. So that's like it's part of, a, you know, your training so to speak. Um, so that was super helpful for me. How cool. Did, what it worked for you? Well, um, love and light. I've been doing, so I was doing a lot of meditations where I grow this light inside of myself and beam it out from within to without to everyone everywhere and specifically parts of the world that are really needing it right now. And that was very helpful. But then I also had on, not had on, I had a, a talk with um, Richard Gordon a few days ago of uh, Quantum Touch. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about baby Hana. And what he suggested is uh, to do a meditation right now, which is I imagine or not imagine, I feel my feet tingling and I focus on my feet tingling on kind of the chi at the bottom of my feet and then imagine it spreading up and try to bring the awareness up through my calves, up through my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, up my back, all the way out to the top of my head and then bring it right back down through the heart, through the heart chakra out and tingling fingertips and inhale, bring it up, exhale, bring it down and out and put my hands on Jessica's belly mm. and bring he healing to baby Hannah's heart. Mm. And so what I've been doing twice a day, every day since then is a hands-on meditation of a, a healing meditation, you could say for Jessica, which I believe is probably pretty good for me as well. Mm. There's something in these times of wanting to feel like watching what's going on in YouTube, and I'm sure it will take off. I'm sure this is a benefit in the long term. It's a time of particular hopelessness mm -hmm. or feeling you no know, helplessness. Mm -hmm. And we want, to, we want to feel like something we're doing matters. Mm -hmm. And so pumping up love and light to me, that's a something that matters. Doing something hands-on with Jessica, that's a something that matters. What's hardest for us is actually what you're talking about right now is the complete and total surrender into, I know something good is going to come of this, mm -hmm. but I have no idea what it's going to look like. You're calling it potentially even secondary. And I just surrender into all that. And I, I think we can, we can do both at the same time, pump up the love and light and completely surrender into the complete and total unknowingness. Yeah. And I, it's funny because we were talked about this last week and I'm like, I'm not sure where I stand on this or what the right position is, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting to my, my understanding of that, which is knowing that holding both is, is helping me be more whole, whole in myself and um, healing. Like when you heal others, you're also always doing healing on yourself too. So yes. um, I, I was sitting in meditation yesterday and basically yelling and screaming and crying and <laughs> and it was and then I and I was like okay but it's me too like I'm in here too and what is it for me and it what came to me was when I was uh, when there were two times in when I was in um, K through five and then eighth grade that I was bullied, you know, where it was like mercilessness bullying on the bus, where I, was, I didn't know when it would stop. It just felt like this is a never, when, when you're being bullied and oppressed and you don't know when it will ever end, 
it just feels help you feel helpless and just yeah. it feels awful so I, I was remembering those times in my life and then I did a healing session with someone because I'm working on my body and she said well when was the original time that you felt that and I said I felt that in the womb because my wow. mom is a very fearful anxiety produced person understandably given that she had to flee communist China and the war and the uncertainty of life. So I get why she was like that. And I think, you know, being a uh, Asian girl, you're not always like, yay, we have another girl on the way. So there's this kind of, Oh, we have a girl and you know, I'm, I'm filled with fear. And so when the very first time that I was filled with fear and helplessness in a sense of like, I can't get out of here, I just have to just be with this, is when I was in, in utero. And we had, this woman had me go all the ba way back to my mother's mother, my mother's mother's mother, all the way back the lineage until there was a time when Asian girls were like excited. You know, people were excited for Asian girls to be there and it took a lot and while I was going through going back 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 I could just feel the resistance and the pain for all of that and it was yeah. very interesting and then I went all the way back to um, when there was like a place where that child was wanted love you know people were excited and surrounded by love and light and she just had me sitting as if I was back in utero mm -hmm. and I said I know this feels really weird, but I think I need to suck my thumb. So, excuse me. <laughs> so, I was lying on the floor in a, in a little blanket in, in like fetal position, sucking my thumb and, and just like being in utero and feeling safe and love and light. And so, it's so interesting that it's, that you're saying that that's the same kind of environment that you're putting in the holding environment for your daughter and creating that for Jessica so that, and yourself so that, you know, everything, the baby, the utero, you, mommy, daddy, it's like all love and light. I think, um, especially given my last experience, I would say I understand now how critical that is. And so if you ever wonder like if it makes a difference, um, I know you know it makes a difference, but sometimes you're kind of like, really? <laughs> Does this make a difference? It was interesting for me to go through that process and kind of be in utero, sucking my thumb on the bottom of the <laughs> floor <laughs> and the blanket. I think I feel like doing that sometimes myself lately. <laughs> we did see many, many uh, ultrasounds ago, I think probably six weeks ago, we did see baby Hannah sucking her thumb mm. in on, on uh, ultrasound. So... Uh, apparently it was a short-lived phase. Now she's in the put a put a put a put a put a because because she's she's going for world's most active baby here. <laughs> yeah, for Jessica, that's hard on the body when you have a kid just kicking because it's you feel it. It's like someone's boxing in your stomach. So so far she's is in in love with it. We've still got two minute two months before she's born. So there's there's time for her to develop some real pow <laughs> and those kicks and bops. <laughs> She's going to be a world-class athlete, I have a feeling. So it's it's a matter of what sport. And obviously coming from that that ilk, uh, I love it. But it's totally up to her. If she doesn't want to do it at all, if she anything, I, I she comes in. Every one of us comes in with our own design, our own plan. And I have to do my best not to get in the way because I'm like, how do you like the cross-country skiing that we're watching that you're watching from Mama's womb? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see yourself being like Jesse Diggins? <laughs> <laughs> well, she has the she has the constitution to be a world class athlete between the two of you, okay. and you know genetically, she's and she's already showing certain kind of proclivities towards that. Yeah, and and what's interesting to me is you watch the Olympics. This is a complete tangent, but it's fun. You watch the Olympics and you hear and such and such is mother was this Olympian and father was this Olympian and grandfather. What you realize is it's not that you're born into Olympi Olympic hood. You're born into you can do it hood. Yeah. And if, if already that barrier to the four minute mile, so to speak, has been broken, then you know you can do it too. Right. And that makes a huge difference. And that's my goal is with baby Hannah is to let her know truly anything, anything she wants is doable. Not from a 
oh, you're really good at everything when there are some things that you're not. That gets back to Carol DeWick and the whole growth mindset that you can actually hurt a child by telling them that they're good at something that they're not rather than express how good they are at resilience, at being able to find a way. Mm -hmm. Because if you're told you're really good at math, you're really good at math, you're really good at math, and you have a test that doesn't go well, all of a sudden you go, that was a lie, I'm really bad at math. Mm -hmm. If you're told you can figure it out no matter what, you'll find a way, you will find a way, and then you hit a stumbling block, you go, oh, I was told I can find a way, yes, I can. Yep, that's really good. So it's, it's Carol DeWick in the growth, did you interview her on the growth mindset? I have not. We, we were in touch many years ago and I'd read a bunch of her work and it looked like we were going to have her on the show. We didn't, but we've, we've interviewed many other people who then reference <laughs> her and the growth mindset and understand her studies well. And I do believe it, it's more important than, um, it's not self-worth. There's a word that I'm missing here. But the concept of resilience is so important. In a sense, that's what we're talking about here, is pumping up the energy to understand, yeah, this may suck right now, individually or collectively. This may feel really icky, but something great can come out of it. And so I get to wrap my mind around YouTube. Hey, it can get even better. We can start a second show. We can do this. And it's easy for me to say this. Now, when I get off the air and I'm looking at analytics, I have to remind myself and come back and come back again. And there's this kind of generator that we each get to work on of, it seems like we go out there, we get shocked. We bring it back home to our heart. We go out there, we get shocked. And this generator, which can actually, thinking about it now, it can act like um, current in your home, alternating current, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, which actually does run this interview for for example so that generator that you've got of a little bit of shock a little bit of healing a little bit of shock a little bit of healing i think can actually make you much stronger well you know that you've told me that through exercise right i mean that is literally how yeah. you break down muscles and you get stronger is through doing that almost every show that i've ever had and we've talked about working out you mentioned that and now you're, you're and i right. hadn't mentioned it today <laughs> <laughs> so it's time it's time to mention it again it's been a long time well um the other thing I, I wanted to bring up that I, I think is is part of what you were doing with um, Jessica and um, baby Hannah is it, it is about, um, and this was a big aha for me yesterday, is it is about um, giving love and light to the field of awareness that's out there. But it's also receiving, and the thing that I, it's hard because I'm, I think both of us are very independent and we're very like committed and responsible. And so um, the key thing was that you're not alone. Like you and I are doing this together and, and that helps. Like it helps to know that you're not alone and that there are guides out there. You know, there are previous Buddhas and, and angels and whomever that are actually with us too. And I forgot that part. And actually remembering that part that you're not alone. And it's not even that alone. It's like the trees and the plants, you know, the oak tree outside your house, the, you know, Mount Rainier. Like it's, it's, it's all here with love and light. And so th that was the, a big aha for me because even though I know that, right, we talk and we do, both of us do shows with people who are angel guides, la, 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 la. But it's during these times of need we're all here together and just what you did with Jessica is like, we're here for you. We're outside here. We're here for you. And then there's like, you know, and there's this audience that's there for them too. Like, you know, everyone who listens to your podcast, I'm sure are sending baby Hannah love. I have been in my meditation. Like, you know, it's just there, there's a wider circle than we realize. And, and I don't know, it helps when I realize I don't have to do it alone. It's, it's uh Something I do in automatic writing is, is communicate with my angels and guides. What they're challenging me here is to make sure, and I'm not always succeeding, I get to do even better with touching base with my angels and guides in writing at least three times a day. Wow. So the trick for me is when I go down is to go, let's do some automatic writing now. Mm. That's, that's when you want to do something else like 
uh, suck on your thumb and go cry under <laughs> on your floor <laughs> desk somewhere. And I think we all feel this lately. Let's let's yeah. let's be honest. These are interesting times. I know. I'm just mentioning it just to, to people <laughs> like it's not. You, there are lots of things you can do. Like just you have to put yourself out there to do it. Yeah, but it, it, it that put yourself out there to go to automatic writing at those times is hardest, and that's where I get to do even even better when I'm starting to fall apart to say, all right, let's go to my angels and guides at this time. Uh, years ago, before we started uh, Inspire Nation, and you were around back then, it was really cool. Um, I started getting 911 showing up a lot and different things. And I'm like, first, I'm like, well, is it angels and guides saying that I get to buy a Porsche? Because at that point I couldn't afford, well, we got kicked out of our home. I couldn't afford anything. <laughs> We had a car in the driveway. We couldn't register it. Um, or was it 911, be scared of danger, you know, towers and stuff? What I realize it means now is call on help. Mm. And certainly now is a great time to call on help greater than yourself mm -hmm. because there's no logicing all of this. And that uh, I recently met with a healer who I'm not sure if I agreed with everything he said, but one of the things he said is, don't try to logic things, go to the heart intelligence. And certainly I want to logic things and I can't. Yeah. It just doesn't work right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the, why is this happening? Don't know. When will it be fixed? Don't know. How will I know when it's done? Don't know. <laughs> when will I, you know, it's just. Am I doing something right? Don't know. Am I doing something <laughs> in quotes wrong? Don't know. Do I get out of bed? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're in the same place. So, but I do but think I did that's good advice. We did hire a uh, a new manager yes, to work tell for Fire me Nation, more. which um, most amazing individual came about via a set of synchronicities when we were about to hire one person, and all of a sudden she swooped in at the last moment. Um, I'll have a lot more information coming up, but this is about getting help. Yeah. And. And particularly now in this last window before we have baby on board, how can I get Jessica more out of the work? How can we grow? Let's be honest. How can we grow up as a business? Mm -hmm. Your business is not grown up. This is, this is a kind of heavy wording to use. Your business is not grown up when it depends on you and your mind. It should be automated systems. Mm -hmm. That's a grown up business to me. Right. And so we're going to be doing a lot of systematizing and figuring things out. Um, that I'm very excited about. Um, the time has come and I had just put it out there. I've been hiring in all of these different areas and I said, well, what I really need is the manager. Mm -hmm. And within 24 hours, I was literally at 10 o'clock, I was supposed to have a meeting to hire a person for one position. At 9.14, somebody came in um, on Upwork and said, I know you're hiring for XYZ. That's not what I'm interested in. Let me tell you what I'm interested in. And it was for the manager. Wow. And Yay. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic, Michael. Well, that's, so, that's fantastic. So you're all set up. All the foundational pieces that you've been working so hard on, I mean, they're coming together. I, I can see all the puzzle pieces. Like They're coming together. It's interesting. So I'm watching my my slippery mind right now, which isn't usually this slippery, but what it's going is, yeah, but you don't know about YouTube. And so we we may many of us may have this that uh, niggling worry that's in there that keeps coming back. And like, do I pull out a laser? Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> or I just get to go. Yeah, you're right. It's going to work out. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, angels. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you're right. And what I can't do now more than ever and it's the challenge for me is go low i gotta go high i gotta bring the energy up face it breathe into it look at it okay yeah i can see that trend is definitely not ideally what i'd like there's a reason for it know that it's steering guidance for me i feel it's completely okay to um uh, be with your wound for a minute. Yeah, I'm bleeding. It hurts. <laughs> this hurts. Your thumb, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, I mean, this hurts. Take your smoothie and alternate between sucking your thumb and drinking your smoothie. I yeah, highly recommend it. The, the, the throat there. 
and then rise up from there. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's about you know, I was there's this body of work that talks you know the whole Malcolm Gladwell and they talk about different levels of conscious evolution and you know it's partially it's it's as you get closer and closer and you develop you do all this work that the two of us have been doing and you start sensitizing yourself to feeling the energies all around you then it's about you feel it individually and then it's about doing the work to start feel strengthening and realizing that it's even the individual work can be done in a collective level and that's like the next to me that's what it feels like to me is the next level that i'm going to is moving from individual to collective holding i don't cj doesn't have to do it herself it's all good cj doesn't have to like close off my shadow parts it's all good and it's like just mm, like mm, integrating and moving to wholeness is like the next step and it's hard because we're not we don't see that in this world because we're trained not to see that or feel that or think that so it's really going against what we're wired to do and it's hard and we're doing that's it. That's the evolution of consciousness, yeah. which is moving beyond the fear-based mind that we came here with, our wiring, that's a default mode network. We look for danger. How can we move beyond that? And that's so much easier said than done. But that's, the, I think the prize is, as we start to do that individually, it tips over collective consciousness and then we all rise to, I don't pretend to know what it looks like. There has to be a beingness where we are no longer dictated by fear, yeah. where there's another way of learning. Yeah. I don't know what that is yet. Apparently, still have a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned by fear and ouch. Um, kind, gentle, easy, good, please. <laughs> but it's coming. <laughs> a better way is coming. And so I look at, for instance, what's going on in the East right now. And I say, this is kind of a last gasp. There may be many last gasps, but it's a last gasp of this old way of beingness. And there's a new way of handling things. Yeah. I, I'm praying that we're going to all arrive there at our own time, but, you know, doing the work to try to move it up to, like you said, more love and light. It's a lot of work. Woohoo! So <laughs> suck your thumb, <laughs> drink your smoothies, send love and light. I think that's the message for today. Except your shadows. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Do your work. Any last words of wisdom beyond that you want to share, <laughs> ZJ? <laughs> that's it. And, and I'll just say I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. And if you will share just a little bit of the love you've got in your heart with someone else today, that'll probably make as big or a big of a difference as anything else. So on that note, for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying be well, have fun, get that smoothie, suck that thumb, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Hump up the love and light and above and beyond all else, shine bright. <laughs>